commercial grade incubators can be ridiculously expensive and not really the best way to incubate your eggs anyway. For the entire time that I've been incubating leopard gecko eggs, ball python eggs, colubra, you name it, I've always used a Coleman cooler. That's it, with a few pieces of material that you can buy at your local hardware shop, most likely, and a few tools. So, today, in about 15 minutes, for about 40 bucks, we're going to make ourselves an egg incubator because we've got some ball python eggs on the way. My name's Adam. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. So here's what you're going to need. Just a few water bottles, which we're going to get to why in a moment, not just because it's really hot in here and I'm sweating my behind off. Uh, scissors, some clamps, so anything to clamp metal together. So what I just use is uh, just a pair of dull type of uh, pliers. That's all you really need. Uh, you can use like straight up crimps, crimps that like a, an electrician would use. It's probably better, but those are fine. Some heat tape, which you can either buy reptile heat tape. THG is this material here and an extension cord you can buy at the dollar store and a thermostat. And that's pretty much it. Some tape also. Tape helps. So here's what we're going to do. Very simple process. I have this heat tape. And I've just cut it. This is 11 inch heat tape. What you can do is you can use a 4 inch heat tape. You can use a 3 inch heat tape. It doesn't matter. The idea is you want it to go all the way around if you can. Um, I was going to put it on the top, but Michelle made a good point. Heat rises. It's pretty, pretty dumb. Don't do that. Or you can put it on the bottom, but then it's going to have to get through your insulator, which we're going to talk about. So you're better off on the, on the walls. You can do it on one wall if you want. Um, and because it's such a small area, it's not, you don't have to worry about a fan to circulate the, it's such a small space. So we're going to tape it right there. But first we have to connect the connectors so that this thing has power and can go to a thermostat. So here's how you do that. Uh, basically you take a extension cord. You take an extension cord, right? This is called the male end of an extension cord. If I can show you, that is a male end of an extension cord. So the other end is a female. You cut the female end off because this part is going to plug into your thermostat and you'll notice that your extension cord has two individual uh, little cords, right? It's the negative and the positive, I think. If I'm wrong, I'll correct it, but it doesn't matter. As long as you do this right, you won't start a fire. It's actually very difficult to doing this project. And then you have these little clamps. Now, if you can't find these, they're AMP clamps. I bought them at uh, Dino Reptile. I think Cornelius World is the, I don't know, I'll put a link where you can buy them in the description below uh, if you're in the US. And the idea is these are just what transfers the electricity from the cable to the actual heat tape. They look like that before you clamp them down. That's just for, uh, anyway, so I had this clamped already. I'm taking it apart for you guys so I can show you how to do it. And when you do it, you clamp the clamp onto the actual wire and just insulate it with electrical tape so that uh, it's, it, you're not touching a live wire. The, it, it's all insulated. It's what you do with electricity. Um, and this is very similar how do you wire a rack, by the way. You just do this several times with just kind of crossing it, but we'll do that in a different video. And this, you're gonna have to feed through the hole in your cooler. So if your cooler doesn't have a drainage hole, you're gonna need to bore a hole into it with a drill. Now I don't have this, and in fact, when I bought this cooler, I bought it with a hole because I knew I was gonna do this project. And also if you don't need the cooler because you're gonna buy a brand new incubator for whatever reason eventually, or you you know need to make a fridge into an incubator because you don't have enough space in one of these, then you can just take these out and your cooler still works and you can go camping. So that's how that works. All right, so now you've got your cord and your heat tape inside of your cooler. So now we're just gonna connect it. And this is really simple. And if you have no electrician experience, like no electrical experience whatsoever, you're in the same boat as me. In fact, I don't change my own light switches in my house. Michelle does that. So this is easier than changing a light switch. Basically what you do, heat tape has this silver metallic uh, line on it. That is um, just coated in plastic and you wanna pierce that thin layer of plastic because this is live, this is what transmits the electricity, but you don't wanna clip into these black lines here, right? So very simple, you just kinda line it up, take whatever tool you're going to use, crimps or whatever, and you're going to squeeze hard and you, I think you can probably hear it. You're going to hear it pierce through. It's just kind of like a little crackle. And that's basically it. You just do that with the other side as well. Uh, and then you're good to go and move on to the next step. 
I don't know, some guys will do this with one little strand of tape. I just prefer to overdo it because at the end of the day, it is electricity and uh, I'm not an electrician. So just go a little bit overboard. The cost of tape is next to nothing. And you just gotta make sure you cover every little bit of that uh, wire. So the next thing is you're gonna need to plug this into a thermostat once we, we haven't taped this onto the back yet, but you might as well because it's gonna get kind of tight in there. Just take your probe for your thermostat and just shove it through that hole because, and just leave it loose so that you can, we're gonna cover that hole in a minute with some insulator. And that's basically it. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this isn't super, you don't have super, a lot of slack but it's not super tight either. And we're just gonna tape that down in place. So now you've just gotta kinda tape down. It doesn't have to be pretty. I mean, at the end of the day, the only thing that's gonna see these are the, the newborn babies, if you're lucky and they hatch. Um, so everything's in there. This is basically it. What we're gonna do now is we're just going to have it take as much of this um, probe as we think we need. And then what I'm gonna do this time is I'm actually going to just kind of tape it in place where I need it to go. Probably something like that, just so that it's kind of reading the middle of the incubator. And then we're going to put a little piece of uh, kind of plastic or some sort of insulator. You can use felt, you can use an old t-shirt. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, the idea is this is not an oven. It's an incubator. You want to make sure that the temperature holds steady and you're bringing it up to 89 degrees, right? If it's ball pythons or, or less, 84 degrees, 80 degrees if it's uh, a colubrid or um, a leopard gecko or something like that. The idea is incubator, not an oven. So let's just go ahead and do that. It doesn't matter what you use. I was lucky enough that uh, we got these frozen smoothies that Michelle paid too much money for that came to the house and they were in one of these cryo bags with uh, dry ice. So I just ripped a piece out of the cooler bag that was inside of there and uh, I'm gonna use that. But last time I used felt, like just felt from a dollar store basically, that you would use to like line the inside of a book safe or something like that. So I'm just gonna tape that there so that it, the heat can't escape through that drainage hole, which is gonna remain open because, I mean, the cords have to be there, right? So I'm just gonna tape that there. So now we've got the entire construction that is permanent, or not permanent, but stuck on, actually done. The, the device that we use to actually heat it is there. The thermostat literally is gonna plug in from the outside. Everything is taped up. What you could do is you could use, uh, instead of taping the probe, onto the side. You could have it just loose like I do in my other one and have it actually on top of the incubation box. It's up to you. I just tried this because it's different. I like to do things different sometimes, see which works better. Now, why do I have so much water? Other than the fact that I'm a sweaty pig in this reptile room. Well, water will retain heat. So every time you open this, the temperature will fluctuate and eggs do not like fluctuation. So in order to get the temperature back as quick as possible, have something in there that holds heat like water so that the, the temperature will just uh, be a ma uh, will maintain is what I'm trying to say here will maintain temperature rather than have to just start from scratch. This is I forget who taught me this trick, but it works really well. And I just however big your coolers, that's how many water bottles you're gonna need. Uh, I'm gonna need more. So what I did instead is I just uh, taped them in place because I didn't want to go get another four perfectly good water bottles that I could drink. And uh, I just taped it in place. You don't. You only need a few. You don't need a ton. The next step, just use something that doesn't hold humidity, like something that doesn't hold temperature, something that isn't an insulator. So I've got hardboard, which is what I've just used as leftover from building a rack like three years ago, and I just cut it to size so it fits over top, right? Just like that. And this is the platform for your egg boxes. So everything will go. So this is an egg box, and this it goes on like that, right? Uh, this is your egg box. It's a stupid egg box but that's how it works. And then that way you have a perfectly flat area so that nothing's gonna be rolling around because if eggs roll, snake eggs roll, you know that's bad news. And uh, anyway, so this is, it's done. That is how you make an incubator. Now all you need to do is plug in your thermostat and then you can fix it to the side with tape and that's it. So here's how you do, there's a link to this, this exact one in uh, the links below. If you click that and you buy it, I get a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything else, but thank you very much for supporting the channel if you do that. Um, <clears throat> and actually the one that I use, this one here, if you're in the States, this is actually the one. But this is, they work the exact same. I just can't get the Jumpstart ones in Canada anymore. Uh, but you can in the States, so that's why the link is down there. So with these 
very simple if you're you know in the uk and or uh in canada whatever part of canada that you're in that you use celsius you can just press the down button and then it goes celsius press the up button it goes in fahrenheit um but because in Canada, we pretend to use Celsius, but we actually use Fahrenheit, and everything that you learn on the internet is in Fahrenheit, we'll use Fahrenheit. Now, this is gonna be for uh, ball python eggs. So, just hold down set. It's actually perfect, it's at 89. I didn't do this, it just kinda came like that. You just hold set for three seconds, it starts flashing, you can go up and down. I don't know how to do the, I don't think you can do the decimal, it's just degree by degree, but I want it at 89 degrees, because I'm incubating ball python eggs. And you just press set again. It's 80 in there. It's heating because you can see that light, the power's on, tape on the back. <laughs> I highly recommend doing this in a room that isn't 82 degrees, uh, wearing sweatpants, socks, and sandals. This was a very easy project. That is how you make yourself an incubator out of a cooler. Let me know in the comments section, was that helpful? Is there some other way I should have done it? I'll have to make another one eventually, right? Uh, and of course, I took this idea to the comment section. You wanted to know step-by-step step how to make an incubator like the one I already had, and I just showed you. So throw your idea down there next. And for those of you who always wanted to know, do those frogs make noise? There's there's that noise. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. For as little as a dollar a month, if you want to see extra stuff like vlogs, see these videos two or three days early, uh, watch how many times I couldn't put the tape on and got it stuck to my finger and had to redo the shot, that type of thing, that's all at Patreon in the link above there. And uh, I think that's it. Hit subscribe, hit the like button. See you on Monday.